Yeah. How it is now the moment for you, for you to wake from sleep. For your salvation is nearer to us now than when we first became believers. Yes, yes. I want to talk to your hearts and minds as we seek to open this new conference year, focusing on the will of God and the purpose that God has for this church and for each of us. I want to illuminate this text through this topic, if you would allow. Recess is over. Mm. Mm. Amen. Look at somebody and tell the neighbor, neighbor. 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 recess. Recess is over. Is over. I, I had planned to have a bell ring. <laughs> Amen. But I left my bell. Amen. But all of us are familiar with recess on. Yes. yes. Amen. If not, you missed out on something. Yes. If you've not experienced that that time, and you know, I think it's sad now that our children don't have that luxury of recess like we used to. You know, one of the things when they were talking about the sugar tax. And they were talking about, you know, taking sugar out of school and all that. And I, and I thought about, you know, we had Kool-Aid and everything in school. They had plenty of sugar. But we also had recess. Yeah. Amen. We ate and we played and we ran and we, we burned it off till we needed some more sugar. So that we could stay awake the rest of the day. Amen. But for some reason, amen, they decided that recess was not essential. And oftentimes our kids don't get to play. Amen. Even parents have taken playtime out of children's growth and we decided that having video games, Wii's and, and all these Nintendos and, and I'm probably dating myself now, but having, having all those video games and sitting in front of the TV was recess. They had that time. We made sure they had computers and smartphones and they got all this. To, they're glued into the box they're, they're, and, and I would say they're trapped into the matrix. The kids don't know what it means to get out and play hopscotch. Amen. They, they don't know what it means to play jumping jacks. They, they don't know anything about marbles. Amen. A jump rope. Amen. And, you know, I remember we double dutch. Amen. And that, that's why we, you know, we, didn't, we weren't obese. Because we burned it all off. We ate a lot, but we burned it all off. Yeah. But it's a, in this profound epistle, Paul explores all the wrong options and takes us to the only correct one. This epistle, this, this letter to Rome, uh, as, he, as he expounds on the book of Rome, and he, and he writes to the church in Rome, he, he, he highlights the things that are wrong with them, things that, that are wrong in the church. He, he highlights the wrong solutions of pleasure and pride, and you'll find that in chapters 1 and 2. And then he gets a correct solution uh, in chapter 3 and 21. He says the solution is Jesus Christ. Yeah. He, he yeah. reminds us that, that we are all uh, in, involved. We've all been entangled with sin, but the answer to sin is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I always say that if, you, if you're going to point out something that's wrong, you ought to have an answer to it. If, yeah. if, you, if you're going to point out a problem, then have a solution. If you don't have a solution, then hold it. Amen. Hold your problem until you can have an answer to it. And Paul does that for us today, is that he points out what's wrong with us, and then he tells us how we can make it right. All right. According to Paul, he notes to us that we are saved by grace, which is yeah. the unmerited favor of God. And then he says it's through faith in Jesus and his work. He says to us that, that what, what Paul begins to write to us and say that, that there are some people in the body of Christ that have realized that we're saved by grace. They, they've realized the luxury of grace. And, and because of that, they decided, you know what, since grace is here, I'm just going to chill. You know, I, you know, grace gonna cover me. I, I just we, we figured we had this this special uh, lottery ticket. We have this special uh, button we can push that that I can do whatever I want to do, and all I gotta do is say, Lord, forgive me. Come on. Well, and it, it's all over with. Amen. I, I, I can go out and drink as much as I want to and party as much as I want to and lie as much as I want to and, and then come back and fall on my knees and even come to the altar on Sunday and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I love you. We can lift up hands and we can praise it. And in some churches, if I shout loud enough, if I dance long enough, then I'll be forgiven. I'll be restored. Well, Paul stops for a moment and he writes to us, in this 13th chapter, to call us out. Mm. 
He, he, he calls us out after chapter 12 talking to us about presenting our bodies as living sacrifices and talks to us about, about grace and everybody having a measure of faith. He, he, he comes over and he, put, he stops in this, in this 13th chapter and he says, but I need you to know that there's something that's more important than what you're looking at around you. He, 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 he admonished us to love one another. He admonished us to obey those that have authority of us. But, but then he says, well, after you've done all of this and you've paid attention to this, I need you to know what time it is. All right. All right. All right. I think that's the profound thing that we find in our day today that people don't know what time it is. Yes. We, we, are, we got all these fancy watches and, you know, designer watches and all of our phones tell the time and, and you know, clocks all around us. We got clocks in your car and clocks in the bathroom. At least I do. If I go as a clock on the microwave. And, and matter of fact, I get irritated if I go to somebody's house and they got the, 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 the clocks are flash. And I'm like, y'all yeah, can't, can't set the, you know. It's irritating. You know, when I look around, I want to know what time. And we, we, we know about the, the chronological time. The yeah. Kronos time, but but there is another time that's called the Kairos time, the yeah. God's time, that, that God is doing something at. And I want you to know today that God is always at work. Yeah. While, while, while we are locked into Kronos, we ought to also be in tune to Kairos because God is moving in our lives. God is doing something. God has been active in our time trying to get us to his time. He, he's transitioning us to eternity. And, and the reality of that is that some of us think that this is all there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or we think that we got time. Mm -hmm. Well, there is there is a a, um, a program or a website called the Death Clock. And on the Death Clock, you can put in your birth date, and 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 they they ask about your 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 attitude, whether you're pessimistic, optimistic, sadistic, or just normal. Then they ask for your BMI, your, your, your body measurement, your body metric index. And, and when you put all that in, it tells you when you're going to die. <laughs> My yeah. Lord. Yeah, it does. It gives you a, it gives you a specific date. The, the, the identical date. I put mine in. Mine came up December 22nd, 2065. <laughs> That's what they told me. That's what they told me. I put in some more folk just to see. <laughs> When their death day was. <laughs> yeah, I did. I put in as much as I knew about you to, <laughs> to get a date. Now, now well, and, and, you know, what, was, what was interesting to me about this death clock, and y'all get home, go to, go to the internet and check it out, but what was interesting to me about it is that when it asks you whether or not you are pessimistic, optimistic, sadistic, or normal, and, and I went back to mine, and when I, when I put in that I was optimistic, I got 2065. When I put in pessimistic, it said that I was going to die in 2009. And, and, and it pops up, it says, you've already expired. Which was basically said that our attitude has an impact on how long we live. Isn't that something? People that go around always negative, always complaining, always some bad folks talking about me, but people don't like. I mean, you are cutting your lifespan down. Yeah. <laughs> Get this. When I put in normal, just it don't matter one way or the other, it came up 2011. I was like, no. I still ain't living. <laughs> so I know some people say, well, I'm just in the middle of the road, I'm straddling the fence. Yeah, it don't make me one different or another. Guess what? You just cut your life short. <laughs> but when you're optimistic, when you're expecting, when you when you're looking for things to get better, even when it don't look like it's gonna get better, it, 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 to me that seems like you're operating on faith that that, that it doesn't look right, it doesn't seem right. But I just believe somehow God's gonna make it right, and, and because I trust in God, I'm gonna yeah. hold out. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so, you know, it, it may not it may not be realistic. Because I did put some folks' birthday in that were already dead, and it gave me the exact day they died to. I'm just saying. It may not be. But what that does, that death clock, what I think, what it, what it does for me and what it, what it may do for some folks, it, it, it gives us a reality check. Because I think sometimes we think we're here forever. That we, we're not going to ever. As a matter of fact, there's a saying, YOLO, you only live once. So you just live all you want to. Young folks think that I'm young. I got plenty of time. I, I can wait till I get old. Guess what? You don't always get to get old. And, and so I, you're called 
today yeah. sounding the bell telling us that recess is over. Yes, yes, yes. We've played long enough. As a matter of fact, as we began this conference here, we've had a year to play. Recess is over. Yeah. Recess is a general term for a period of time which a group of people is temporarily dismissed from duties. In parliamentary procedures, recess refers to a legislative body that are released to reassemble at a later time. It is used as an alternative to adjournment. In education, recess is known as playtime, as break. Y'all, y'all, we, we talked about the, y'all remember the merry-go-round? Yeah. Amen, I used to hate them things. <laughs> Amen, I always got dizzy. Yeah. My brothers would put me on there and hold me there and make me get sick. <laughs> hate it, recess. Amen, but, amen, y'all pray for me. <laughs> amen, my brothers traumatized me. <laughs> about why recess has its advantages. As a matter of fact, statistics show that children that engage in recess and even companies who have uh, put a point of recess in the daily activities of their employees, where they allow them to not only just take a lunch break, but they have a play break. And those, those employees are more productive during the day than those that do not. Children are more alert when they have that time to engage in, in just trivial and non-trivial and, and, and to just relax and enjoy themselves. But the reality is, is that the church has also taken a recess. Amen. The church has, has, has gone to a point that, that we just want to, to enjoy life. We want to have a good time. We want to be entertained. We don't, we don't want to hear about sin. We don't want to hear about death. We don't want to hear about doing right or living holy. We just want to know how can I be prosperous? How can I have a new house? How can I get a new car? How, how can I have everything I want? How can I make God out of a slot machine with just name it and claim it and get everything? We just want to have it our way. As such, the church is in recess. We've gone from proclaiming the gospel to proclaiming that God will do whatever we want him to do when we want him to do it. Yes. Amen. Studies have revealed that in any given worship experience, that only 2% of the people that hear the message will leave their transformed. That means that 98% of the folk will hear it, maybe be inspired by it, Maybe be enthused by it, but will not be changed by it. Yes. That's 98% that will go out the same way they came. That means that only 2% here today will hear the message. Only 2% will com comprehend it. Only 2% will be transformed. Look at somebody that says, she talking about you. She talking about you. She ain't talking about me. <laughs> And it seems to me that, that that statistic was not just linked to our day. But it seems to me that Paul had that same problem. He began to realize that out of all the preaching and teaching he was doing, the letters he was writing and, and the encouragement that he was giving to the saints that, that there uh, a, a sense of complacency, a sense of, of we got time, a sense of laziness, lethargicness had, had crept into the body of Christ and, and that that urgency yes. of, 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 of anticipating the soon return of Jesus had left them. This yes. is 40 years Paul writes. 40 years after the crucifixion, 40 years after the resurrection, he writes to the Roman church. 40 years they've been expecting, 40 years they've been waiting. Remember Jesus said that I'm going away to prepare a place and I'm coming back. At. And when he left, he, when, they, when he was caught up, he, he told them, he said, I'll be back to get you all that. And for those 40 years, the disciples and the apostles were, and all the other leaders and teachers in the, were going around telling them he's coming back. Get ready. He's coming back. And year after year, they kept saying he's coming back. He's coming back. And he ain't and so finally they said, you know, he ain't coming no time soon. We got time. And, and here we are over 2,000 years later, and we still saying he's coming back. And, yes. and you all, yeah, they've been saying that for a long time. But, but he hasn't showed up yet. But, but, but I stopped by to tell you, he has showed up. He has come back. He, yes. he is here right now. And yes. Because he declared that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's yes. right here with you. And you ought to be actively yes. participating in the kingdom. You ought to be actively doing something in the kingdom. There's no time. A bench member. No time to sit around and say, I'm just, I'm just here. I just want to see. I just want to show up. But there is so much work to be done because he is here and he's coming again to receive us. So Paul, Paul writes very quickly. Paul rings the bell. 
for resets. He rings the bell four times, and this pericope telling us that recess is over. First of all, Paul reads in verse 11 tells us it's time to wake up. Yes. He says you've been sleeping long enough. You yes. spent enough of your time sleeping. And, 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 and the word that Paul used in this text for sleep, amen, is not the one that we're used to talking about. You know, usually we're used to sleep referring to the people being dead and resting in the Lord. But, yes. but this word that he used for sleep is, it, the Greek word is equivalent to our English word of hypnosis. Uh, of being drowsy. Uh, basically, Paul is saying that the folk are going around in la-la land. They, they walk around with their heads in the clouds just, just all high and high in the sky. Matter of fact, it's like everybody been, been smoking weed or, 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 or sniffing or whatever. You're all in a, you're in a spiritual daze and, and you're just, just going around, going through the motion. And, and, and Paul is saying to us that it's time for you to let go of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's time for you to wake up. He says yeah, it's time for us to get up out of our slot slumber and sleep, time for us to, to get our house in order, time for us to be busy, to, to wake up, to shake yourself, to, to get the sleep out of your eyes, to, to get out of that siesta of just chilling and find out what it is that God is doing. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. You know, it, it amazes me, even as I looked at annual conference and a lot, lot of stuff that I experienced, a lot of stuff that I saw, and I'm, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, you know, if, if we only knew what time it was, if we, if we only knew where we were, if we only, you know, how we, how we missed so many opportunities. So, you know, preachers preaching, great words go forth that, and rather than, you know, as much as we had a good time in, in the ministry to me and Mars, the, the preacher preached a mighty word, and, and, be, and rather than take time to invite folks into Christ and to see if somebody wanted their lives transformed, we got to dance. And I'm not saying that, you know, that, that, that there's a time for everything, but, but there was a pivotal time there for somebody to be transformed, somebody's life to be changed, but, but we decided to do business as usual. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, y'all, we have to flip the script. Every now and then, we got to change the program. You may yeah. have something on their agenda that you have planned to do, but if the Holy Spirit show up, you got to be in tune, you got to be listening and yeah. moved by the Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I know y'all didn't know this, but God didn't go by our agenda. I, I tried it. I tried to plan stuff and, and, and try to do it my way. And, and I had things laid out on how I fought it. But then the Holy Spirit would show up and say, no, we got to go this way. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking time and planned out messages and had them scripted just like I thought they ought to go. And then the Spirit shows up and said, no, you need to say this. No, they need to hear this. And then just stay right there. Don't even worry about the rest of it. I just need you to focus on that. Yeah. yeah. All right now. Now, I know, I, know, I know folks will say, well, 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 things ought to be in order. The Holy Spirit is always in order. Amen. Matter of fact, all order comes from God. Yeah. And if there's disorder, that means God is not in it. Yes. So Paul says, first of all, he says to us, he says that you, you need to wake up. And then after he says that, he says to us, he says, he says you spend half the day running around. And he says, then it's time, it's time for you to get dressed up. Yeah. Dressed up. It's amazing how sometimes people wake up. I, I do it sometimes on Mondays. You wake up and you spend half the day in your pajamas. Mm -hmm. Don't want to put on any clothes. Just, just want to chill. Just, just really didn't want to get into it. And, and, the, and the thing about it is that Paul uses this metaphor to talk about Christians. How we are awake, we are alert, we see what's happening, but we don't want to clothe ourselves in the righteousness. We, we see stuff wrong. We see stuff wrong in our own lives. And then we'll say the Lord know my heart. Yeah. 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 I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah, we say, well, well, well the Lord know. I, I, I get it right after a while. But Paul says, recess is over. The time is now. Paul writes to us and said that God is a God of time and season. God knows our time. God knows our season. And he's calling us today to admonish the time, to, to recognize what is happening. I, I know the testimony of the turn of the millennium. I, I know what happened because I was there. I know what happened in the 90s. I know what happened in the 80s and in the 70s. I heard about the 60s, the 50s, and the 20s. And Paul says, while we, are, we know about what happened in the natural, we ought to know what God is doing in the spiritual. And the only way you're going to know that is got to be tapped into it. So Paul, what are you saying? We said, he says it's time out for you just talking about I'm a Christian. It's time not 
for you talking about I'm a member of Davis Chapel. It's time out for you talking yeah. about I'm a lay leader, I'm a crowd member, I'm, a, I'm a, the board of Christian education, or, and all this kind of stuff. It's time for you to say, I got a relationship with the master that yeah, I'm a yeah. friend of God yeah, and he's a friend yeah. of mine. It's time for you to get a real connection so yeah. that you can hear the voice of God, so you can know what the Spirit is doing. That you ain't got to yeah. wait on somebody to give you a word. You ain't got to wait on somebody to prophesy to you yeah. that you can know what God is doing. You can feel the presence of God. You can know God is doing. He says, recess is over. One man went to sleep and fell out the window and died. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. believe it, go read. Dangerous to sleep on God's time. That's right. We're sleeping in dangerous time. Paul says, recess is over. I gotta hurry real quickly. The text says that he says that that, that it's time to wake up. Mm -hmm. It's time to, to put it to get dressed up. And then he says it's time to start walking. Yeah. He says it's time to, to walk the right way. You've been walking the wrong way. You've been doing things the way you used to. Sometimes folks think that because, because that, uh, I, 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 I go to church, because I tithe, because I give my, my, my time and my service, that I can do whatever I want to do in my private life. But I want you to know that you are not a schizophrenic Christian. You ought, well, let me correct it. You ought not to be a schizophrenic Christian. That, that anytime folks see you, they ought to recognize that you're a Christian. That yeah. if they see you in a nightclub, they ought to say yeah. you're a Christian. If they see you, on a dance floor, they ought to still be able to tell that it's something different about you. That there ought to be something that sets you apart. Paul says you ought to walk differently. He says walk uprightly because yes. there's a time is now. Yes, 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 yes. Paul yes. says now's the time to wake up, to get dressed, to start walking. And then finally he rings the bell. And he says the time is to get focused. Hello. It's time for us to focus. Yes. We've been too scattered. You've been running over here and running over there and doing this and doing that and listening to this and listening to that and, and, and there is no focus to your direction. Yeah. And God says it's time to get focused. It's time for us to hone in specifically to what God is calling us to do. And he says that the pattern that we ought to live after is that of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Great military genius Napoleon Bonaparte quoted saying that a man becomes his uniform. Basically saying that that the un that once you put on that uniform, mm -hmm. that if you wear it long enough, you will become the uniform. Mm -hmm. All right. You, you understand what I'm saying? A, a soldier, you know, when you first go to boot camp, you're not really a soldier. You just somebody in a uniform. And, and after a while, after you've been in there and you've gone through so much there, you become the uniform. The uniform is who you are, that even when you take it off, you still find yourself walking right. You still find yourself doing stuff according to a soldier. Even those that have been in the military and, and gotten out and find themselves in other jobs, they will operate like soldiers. They, they, their leadership is like a soldier. Teachers, yeah. even when they yeah. stop teaching, they still find themselves. You become the uniform. Christians ought to be the uniform. If you put on the whole yeah. arm of God, if you dressed up in Jesus, and wherever I find you, I ought to know that's a Christian. Wherever I see you, I ought to know that's a Christian. And if you're not in yeah. uniform, I stopped by this morning to tell you, David Chapel, recess is over. You can take your plain clothes off and put your uniform on because it is time to get it together. Yeah. So today, what is it that I want you to get from this message? I want you to know that whatever you've been doing, and if it has not lined up with God, it's time to let it go. Yes. Or maybe you've been doing what you've been doing consistently year after year, and there's been no change, no elevation. There's been no growth. Mm -hmm. That means that you're stuck. Yeah. Yes. I stop by to tell you recess is over. It's time for you to move to another level. And you say, well, why am I stuck? Because you have not desired to move. Yeah. Yeah. Some folk are in certain places and this is all they want. Because yeah. it's comfortable. Yeah. But God has not called us to be comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. One, one sure way to know that you are walking in the will of God is when it's so uncomfortable right. yeah. that you don't even want to do it. Right. Yes, yes, yes. But you find yourself compelled to do it. Yes. Paul says the good that I would do, I don't do, and that that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Oh, wretched person. But he says yes. that it's uncomfortable, it's uneasy.
easy. It, it, it pulls me. It draws me. Yeah. Yes. 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 Recess is easy. Yes. My Lord. My Lord. It's easy. Sitting in the pews is easy. Yeah. Letting somebody else do all the work is easy. Yeah. But today it ought to be your testimony. Yes. That I'm tired of playing now. Yes. You know what mama used to tell you don't play with your food? Yeah. And how you get in trouble for playing with your food? You get in trouble for playing with God. Yes. And we played with God too long. God is calling us now to get it together. Yes, yes. So I don't want you to be among those 2% that leave here unrepentant, untransformed, undelivered. But today is the day that you can say that I'm ready to come in. Yes. My Lord. I'm waking up. I want to get dressed. I want to walk right. I want to do what's right. And so you can lift up your hands and say, Lord, show me the way. Let us pray. God in heaven, here we are. Yes. And God, we come first of all acknowledging that we've wasted a lot of time. Yes, Lord. When we count up the time that we wasted doing things that were not beneficial for our spiritual growth. It is more than we care to recount. But we th we're thankful that you're the God of time. Yes. And that you are able to help us make up that time. So God, right now we surrender to you. Yes. We surrender our will to you, our way to you. And we ask now, Lord, that you would transform our minds. Yes. Transform our hearts. Let this word fall on, hot, on, on good ground. Yes. Yes. That we won't leave here the way we came. Yes. That as the bell is told, that we will come running. Yes. Say, here are my Lord, send me. Yes. So this conference year, equipped us now for your service. We'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 The invitation is extended if there's someone today you can come.